In this video, we're going to join all of the sections together of our quilt as you go quilt using the one to three method and also the joining strip method. And you'll also see our final applique block. We hope you enjoy this video. We started by joining the middle row. This whole row will be joined together with the one to three method. This method works well when you have one section that is quilted all the way to the edge and another section that has not been quilted all the way to the edge with what I have previously referred to as a no quilting zone. The first step is to trim and measure the churn dash and Ohio star section. As it's a patchwork block, there is no room for trimming as it's a fixed size. Just trim to the same size as the top, trimming away the batting and backing. So trim one edge first and pull it into shape to make the edges straight if necessary. Work your way around the blocks, making sure that a line on the ruler aligns with a straight trimmed edge of the section. In some places, the top layer may have shrunk back slightly from the quilting. If you feel that it is substantial enough to be caught in the seam, then leave it. But if it has shrunk back too far, you may have to trim a little more away from the edge. I think that it's better to lose a point than to have the fabric fray away from the seam after washing. Now measure the section. My section measures 12 and a quarter inches high and 24 and a quarter inches wide. It has shrunk in a little bit from the quilting, which is to be expected. Now to work out the size of the Billy Buttons panel. The width is easy because it needs to be the same width as the Churn Dash and Ohio Star section, so 24 and a quarter inches wide. When joined, the height of these two sections need to be the same height as the pinwheel section. So why is that? because this is the tallest patchwork block in the row and as patchwork blocks are a set size, they determine the height. We all try to be as accurate as possible when sewing a patchwork block together, but they can vary in size slightly from person to person, which is okay. That's why we made the applique blocks a bit bigger than required so they can be trimmed to compensate for any patchwork block that has turned out slightly smaller than required. So the applique blocks are the key to making the pieces fit. So basically, if you're following along at home, don't stress if your blocks aren't the exact size because... But, yeah, that's right. That's right. And um, also if your block is a little bit shorter, it just means that your quilt's going to be a little bit shorter. It's mm -hmm. really no big deal. Now, just in the same way that we've done before, the sizes are worked out less the seam allowance and then the seam allowance is then added back on at the end before you trim the block. <laughs> <laughs> There is a quarter inch seam allowance on all edges, so a quarter inch at the top and a quarter inch at the bottom equals half an inch. So subtract half an inch from the measurements. My pinwheel block measures 16 and a half inches square, less the seam allowance, and this section here measures 11 and three quarter inches high, less the seam allowance. So 16 and a half minus 11 and three quarters equals four and three quarters. Add the seam allowance back on, and the measurement for the height of the Billy Buttons panel is five and a quarter inches. So with this part, I like to make a tissue paper template to make sure that I don't accidentally cut the section too small. So some people like to mark directly onto the fabric and you can do that too. Just make sure the design is centered as we showed in the Birds and Banksia video. That's right. Here is my tissue paper template. I've marked the center, vertical and horizontal line as well as the top and bottom edge with a reminder to leave an extra quarter inch of batting and backing that is required for the one to three Courgego joining technique. So I've shown this before, but here's a quick recap. Make sure that the tissue paper template is centered and hold it in place with flat pins. Trim the sides and the top level with the tissue paper. 
Then trim a quarter of an inch away from the tissue paper on the bottom edge. Unpin the tissue paper and mark a line that is a quarter of an inch away from the bottom edge. Slip the ruler between the top layer and the batting and carefully cut on the marked line. Here's the Billy Buttons panel. It's now the correct width and height. Okay, so you know how to trim the applique blocks now, and rather than bore you with all the maths in this video, we put all the calculations in the course notes. That's right, just so it doesn't get too overwhelming for everyone. So here are the pieces all trimmed, and as you can see, there is an extra quarter inch of backing and batting on the bottom edge of the Billy Button section, both sides of the bottle brush section, and on one side edge of the kangaroo lobelia section. And this is because we are going to join this whole row together with the one to three quilt as you go method. Okay, so I have a question for you. Yes. What happens when you don't leave an extra quarter inch of batting and backing? Okay, it's not the end of the world. Um, what it just means is that you're not going to have that extra half inch to fold under and um, machine stitch down. So you will just have to join with a quarter inch seam allowance and then you'll have a quarter inch to fold under and you'll have to hand sew. So now it's time to join all of the sections together in this row with the one to three method. And we have shown this in other videos before, so you can go back and check those videos out too. So you can see here that we need to join the Billy Buttons to the Churn Dash and Ohio Star section, then to the Bottle Brush, then to the Pin Wheels, then to the Blue Flowers. So Laura, here's a test for you. Do you remember how to do this? Yes, I do. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> so first of all, place the two sections together with one that has the loose or no quilting zone on the top. Separate the batting and backing and pin one layer of the top section to all three layers of the bottom section. Place the pins in a crossway, spacing them about an inch and a half apart. Sew the seam with a regular quarter inch seam allowance, holding your work from behind and in front to help ease it through. So as I was sewing, the fabric was stretching and I thought that it was a good idea just to let it go rather than easing it in. At the time, I felt that it was better to let it go and trim it off because as it's an applique section, I had extra room so I can easily trim that away. So we left this part in because I think it's really good to show everyone the little errors and mistakes that we have because if I was sewing alone at home by myself, I probably would have sewn that seam a bit funny. And that's the beauty of this quilt is that most patchwork sections have an applique section that they're joining onto. So even if you are a very beginner, you can do this course and have success because you know, you can just trim away those applique blocks. That's exactly right. Yeah, so it's good to leave those things in, but at the end of the day, I didn't trim it. I decided to unpick and re -sew it again. <laughs> well, on second thoughts, I decided that I'm not going to trim that little bit off because when I've laid my pieces out and I'm using the lines on my cutting mat here, I can see that this little bit here has kind of shrunk back a little bit. So it means that I should have pinned this up a little bit higher. And this little bit here is probably what has kind of stretched out down here. So I'm actually going to unpick it and re -sew. And so not look, trim. No. Because we we're too busy talking. So That's you right. Pin it right. <laughs> That's exactly right. All right. So how do you unpick? So I just go along with my seam ripper and I just unpick or break every say third stitch like this. And then that means that on the back I can just grab that and it all comes out like that. Oh, it's easy. It is easy. It's not that bad on picking at all. So I'm taking the time to properly repin it. Although I thought I properly repinned it the first time or pinned it. <laughs> <laughs> So take two. So my tips are make sure that you reverse at the beginning and end of each row. And the reason for that is we want to make sure that it's nice and secure and it's not going to come apart. And as I start sewing, I'll just get started there. 
So as you start sewing, I think it's a good idea to hold from behind and in front because that fabric on top could be a little bit um, loose. So you can just stretch it. Basically hold it from the front, hold it from the back and help it to ease through. So see, fabric may be a little bit loose. So holding from the front and from behind. And sewing. So once you get over all of that sewing part, the next step is to press the seams towards the applique section. Trim the batting so it butts up against the edge of the seam Mark a line that's 3 eighths of an inch away from the raw edge of the backing fabric. Press on the marked line. Glue base the backing fabric over the seam. Turn to the front and pin in the ditch, and then turn to the back to check that all the pins have been caught in the edge of the backing fabric. And stitch in the ditch. So all joined, that section? Yes, all joined. Um, actually, I've got to come back and do the top stitching or the quilting along here. So it matches that. So the quilting, it's three eighths of an inch away from the seam. And what that does is that just catches in the edge of the batting, which means that we don't have to worry about using batting joining tape in these sections. So to do this final top stitch, you can either use your walking foot, a standard foot, or I'm just using my open toe foot because the distance from the edge of the foot to the needle is about three eighths of an inch. So that's what I need. One section down, now all of this to go. We're going to join it all together in the same way with the one to three method.
So it's looking good. Um, at this point in time, I don't really know what I'm going to do with the quilting there. It needs some extra rows to hold that batting in place. But um, here I've done that stitching line that ties in with that. I may do some straight lines like I've done here, but I'm going to join this onto this first and kind of stand back and have a look. Actually, I might even put that one. I'll do the whole row and then I'll stand back and have a look and see what it needs. Nice. So I'm just going to turn the work around to pin in the ditch because I like to pin this way so as I sew I can slide my pins out and I'm better off to have less fabric going through the C section of my machine than more fabric, <laughs> if that makes sense. C section? Yeah, so this bit here, it's like a C. Oh. <laughs> if you look at it from... Is that a real thing? Or did you just make it up? I think I've heard it before. I hope so. What do you call this bit? I thought it was throat. Like throat. Throat space. Yeah, C section is how you have a baby. <laughs> that's true. I guess you are birthing a quilt. I am, that's right. <laughs>
So what's next now? I have to make the final applique blog. Nice. Yeah. So the final applique block and the final piece to the Island Home Quilt Puzzle. That's right. And we just um, made that section just in the same way that we always do. So we do have a deep dive onto fusible raw edge applique, but I just fuse the pieces on, blanket stitched around the edge and then put my layers together and I just stitched around the edge, just sewing nice and close to the edge. And then I did my echo quilt around the edge of it. And I like to do that with the applique blocks. And the reason for that is that if we need to have some of the edges loose, um, they're loose. So we're not stitching or quilting all the way to the edge. And you can see in the footage that you've marked the line for the echo quilt. So how far out was that? Um, so that was a quarter of an inch. And I just find that with my walking foot, it's a little bit wide, doesn't have a straight edge. So it's easier for me to mark it and then just follow my marked lines. So after that, mum went ahead and joined the bottom row together in the one to three method in the exact same way. That's right. So all of the trimming instructions are in the course notes and so you won't go wrong there. So just trim them up and join them in exactly the same way with the one to three method. And you went back and added a bit of extra quilting, didn't you? I did because as I'm making the quilt, sometimes I don't really know where, how I want to quilt it. So I have gone back and added some extra quilting and I've put all those instructions in the course notes. But if you want to get creative and add your own quilting. Yeah, you... feel free to personalize it. That's right. It's your quilt at the end of the day, just do whatever you like. That's right. So long as you follow those guidelines of if you need a no quilt zone, just mm -hmm. stick to that but apart from that we encourage you to be as creative as you like exactly it's your quilt and then so now we've got to join the rows together that's right so we're going to join the rows together with the joining strip technique so why did you use the joining strip technique there because when you have quilted sections that don't have the no quilt zone so all the edges are stitched quilted all the way to the edge and you only have a quarter inch seam allowance it's time to use the good old joining strip technique so if I was following along at home and I was doing quilt as you go and I had all these blocks in my stash where yep. there was no quilt zone That's and I wanted right. to join them together and they had no points, I could use this method? Uh, yes, but also if they had points, so it's great for pointy blocks too. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you made patchwork blocks and you've quilted them all the way to the edge and then you trim them up to the same size as the patchwork block mm -hmm. itself, this method is perfect for that. Well, let's get into it. Okay, let's go. So tidy up the edges to be joined by trimming away the frayed edges. I'm not actually trimming anything off, I'm only just trimming away any frayed edges. Fold the back one and three quarter inch wide strip in half lengthwise with the wrong sides facing. Place the back strip right sides together with the back, aligning the raw edges. I like to start with it being a little bit longer and I also like to glue baste it in place, but this is optional. I then iron to help the glue set a little bit faster. Flip the quilt over to the right side and place the top one inch wide strip right sides together with the top. 
align all edges and pin together. Head to the machine and sew with a quarter inch seam. The success of this method depends on an exact quarter inch seam allowance, so I like to use my quarter inch foot. Zhuzh the quilt up around you so that it feeds through the machine <laughs> nicely without dragging. Zhuzh, that just seems like the perfect word, I think. It kind of did, it's yeah, like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we were trying to come up with a, <laughs> with a description, yep, a, a describing zhuzh. word. Zhuzh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Now trim the strips level with the side edges of the quilt. Fold the sections in half to find the centres and mark with pins. Place the two sections right sides together and pin the top strip to the other section. Pinning the centre first, then the outer edges, and then in between. So would you say for pinning, it's quite important. So I found from watching you do this, a tip would be get some really sharp pins. Nice sharp pins. Yeah. <laughs> Every now and then I pull out a blunt pin and it's like, oh. Oh. yeah, so nice sharp <laughs> pins definitely helps. Yes. Head to the machine and sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. A tip is to use tweezers to make sure that the top strip is aligned with the underneath section. You can pull that in place if necessary. So everything's butted up on the wrong side like that and you can see that you just need to fold that over to cover the stitching line and on the front you have a really neat half inch wide strip. Yeah I like that, that's really cool. It is cool isn't it? Glue base the back strip over to cover the raw seams. You'll see that the folded edge will cover the stitching line by almost an eighth of an inch. I like to work in sections and Allura noticed that I like to move the iron in circular motions to make sure that I'm really pressing it down flat. To the front and pin in the ditch. Then turn to the back to check that the pins have caught in the folded edge of the backing strip. 
change to the open toe foot and stitch in the ditch. As your quilt grows, roll it up so that it can move freely through your machine. So zhuzhing it up if necessary. to the back and check that the ditch stitching has caught in the back strip. And that's the joining strip method. I just want to say one thing. If you did want to hand stitch the backing strip, you cut that one and a half inches wide and just do that in exactly the same way and then you hand sew the back strip down. The folded edge of that back strip will meet the stitching line. Awesome. Yeah. And then you went ahead and did the exact same thing to the other row? That's right. Just joined it in exactly the same way. And that's yep. the Island Home Quilt Joined. That's right. Exactly. Added a bit of extra quilting here and there. But as I said, that's all in the course notes. Mm -hmm. So that's our island home quilt all joined together. I know, how exciting. It's very exciting. Mm. But we will be back with a bonus video because I do want to add a border around the edge and we'll see you in the next video. Yep. Bye. Bye.